If you're working as a musculoskeletal physio, there's a good chance that you'll see at least one patient a day coming in with pain between the shoulder blades. But what is causing this pain? Is it the neck? Is it the upper back? Is it posture? Or is it trigger points and muscle tightness? In this video, we will explain how to get to the bottom of medial scapular or rhomboid pain and show you how to treat it. Check out our online courses now. The link is in the video description. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. If you're a practitioner or patient looking for solutions for pain between your shoulder blades, you'll find plenty of different suggestions on social media. There's one camp which claims that medial scapular pain is coming from the lower cervical area. Another one claiming that it's the thoracic joints and limited thoracic mobility. And a third camp which focuses on the rhomboid muscles directly. But how do you know who is right and could it be one or the other in different patients? There's indeed a great amount of literature showing that the cervical and the vertebral discs at C4 and C5 and lower, as well as the facet joints, can all refer pain to the area medial to the scapula. Check out the literature list in the description of this video to learn more about these studies. But can we as therapists make it more or less likely that the origin of interscapular pain is coming from the neck? If you have watched our video on referred pain, you know that referred pain often starts as local pain in the spine, and if pain persists, spreads to an area distally. So in case interscapular pain is referred from the neck, you would expect a history of neck pain, concomitant neck pain, and an association between the degree of neck pain and medial scapular pain. Furthermore, referred pain is often aching and diffuse in nature, in contrast to local pain, which is often sharp or stabbing and well localized. Third, a nociceptive stimulus at the cervical area should refer pain to the rhomboids. A way to examine this is by performing PA pressure on the cervical level C4 and lower, and if you're a manual therapist, you would want to perform PIVMs in 3D extension with the goal of eliciting an increase in pain in the interscapular area. To summarize, rhomboid pain coming from the cervical area is likely if, number one, the patient also has neck pain or history of neck pain. Two, interscapular pain increases with increasing neck pain or decreases when neck pain decreases. And number three, Provocative maneuvers like PA pressure or PIVMs in the lower cervical area elicit or increase pain in the rhomboid area. If your suspicion of referred pain from the neck was confirmed, you can directly move on to treatment. Cervical manipulations and mobilizations can often provide instant but often only short-term pain relief. For this reason, it's important that the patient performs self-mobilizations of the cervical area up to several times per day at home or at work. Advise the patient that there is no clear link between posture and pain in the scientific literature, but that remaining in static prolonged postures can be a contributor of muscle pain. Therefore, patients should try to change their posture frequently and use the aforementioned exercises as movement snacks. Now let's examine if the pain might be coming from the thoracic spine. The story here is very similar to what we just mentioned about referred pain from the cervical spine. Studies by Dreyfus et al. in 1994 and Young et al. in 2008 show that referred pain from the thoracic facet joints and costal transverse joints refer pain laterally. So basically the whole upper and mid thoracic area could potentially refer pain medial to the scapula. If this hypothesis is likely, we would also expect the history of thoracic pain, current thoracic pain, and an association between thoracic pain and medial scapular pain. And we can also try to provoke rhomboid pain by manual examination. Again, you can either perform PA pressure centrally or unilaterally to the facet joints, and or costal transverse joints. And another option are PIVMs in the direction of 3D extension with the goal of eliciting or increasing interscapular pain. 
If your suspicion of referred pain from the thoracic spine was confirmed, you can consider the following treatment options. Number one, like mentioned in the cervical spine, cervical thoracic and or thoracic manipulations and mobilizations can often provide instant but often only short-term pain relief. There are also plenty of mobilization exercises for the thoracic spine that patients can perform themselves several times a day. Here are three examples. Again, advise the patient to regularly change posture and use these exercises as movement breaks. So, you've examined the cervical spine and the thoracic spine, but you haven't found these areas to be the culprit of rhomboid pain. Then, there's a good chance that your patient is having local muscle pain. In contrast to referred pain, local muscle pain is often described as sharp and well localized. Unfortunately, the phenomenon of trigger points can also be responsible for referred, diffuse and aching pain, which can make a differential diagnosis more difficult. To make the hypothesis of local muscle pain or trigger points more likely, you can palpate the rhomboids and adjacent muscles in the interscapular area for sore spots. Make sure that you are reproducing the patient's recognizable pain, because you can find tender spots in basically all asymptomatic patients as well. So what can you and your patient do in case the pain is likely of muscular origin? There's a broad range of options for short-term pain relief that are worth a try. Trigger point treatment with your thumb or dry needling. Yes, this does help quite a few patients in the acute phase. Put a tennis ball or a cross ball between your rhomboids and a wall and find the painful spot. Stay on the spot for one to two minutes. Ideally, your pain levels should decrease within that time frame, despite constant pressure. Putting a hot water bottle on painful muscles can often provide relief. A heat plaster can be an alternative. To stretch the rhomboids, sit in a flat level chair. Move to the edge of the seat so your feet are flat on the ground and your knees are at right angles. Spread your legs a little more than hip width apart. Reach over and grab your left ankle with your right hand. With your left hand, press into your right elbow crease until you feel a stretch between your spine and shoulder blade on the right side. Hold the stretch for around 30 seconds, breathing in deeply. Then return to start and repeat. Do two to three repetitions, then switch and do the same stretch on the other side. The long-term solution to help and prevent rhomboid pain is, you guessed it, exercise. The following exercises are all targeted on the rhomboids amongst other muscles. All exercises should be done with tolerable pain at max. In case a patient experiences an increase of pain, pain levels should settle to starting levels within 24 hours after the exercise. If the pain reaction lasts longer, you should decrease the training intensity or volume. All right, this was our video on the cause of interscapular pain and possible treatment options for it. We hope this helped with some confusion that you might have had around this topic. This was Kai for Physio Tutors, and I'll see you in another video. Bye.